The string class is a powerful class in Java, and I want to look at the humble method of the string class called length. And to do that, I have created a string called word that's referencing barefoot. And if I was to look at that visually, it would look something like this. And if I wanted to find its length, all I would have to do is count its individual characters. And if I counted its individual characters, I would get eight, because there are eight characters inside of barefoot. And if I wanted to show that in the code, I could do that using comments. And I'm using numbers above each character value to show how long the word is. So again, barefoot has eight characters inside of it. Now, if I want to use the method length, this is how I do it in the code. I would say the name of the string object, which is word, and then use length. And I could store it in an integer value called length. It's somewhat important to note that you can only have integer values as the length, as there's no such thing as a half character or a quarter of a character. So it'll always return an integer value. And then I'm going to print out the length of barefoot is, and it should say eight, and it does. Now, if we wanted to do this a different way, instead of declaring a variable up here, I've just used word.length inside of the print line statement. It's completely legitimate, and it would also print out the length of barefoot is eight. So that's really all you need to know about the length method. But I want to go a little bit further and show you a practical use for using the method length. But before I show you the practical use, it's going to require just a little bit of setup. We know that the length of barefoot is 8. But if we looked at the index of barefoot, it would be from 0 to 7. And you'll notice that the index is slightly different from the length. The index is always going to start at 0, whereas the length is always going to start counting at 1. Well, where is this going to make a difference? It's going to make a difference in the last character. The last character's index is going to be 7, whereas the length is going to be 8. So we can glean from this that the length is always going to be 1 greater than the highest index of the string. And the index is always going to be 1 less than the length of the string. So if I gave you the word barefoot and I said, I want you to find the last letter in barefoot or start from the end of barefoot, how would we do that? Well, we could do it by simply finding the last character, which is at the index seven. And if we were to print this out now, it would say the last letter is T. But what if I didn't tell you what word I'm going to get or I used a different word? And so in this case, I've used the word cow. Would it work to still say word.char at 7? Well, no. It would give me an index out of bounds because cow doesn't have an index of 7. So I'm going to show you a way that you can use length to determine what the last letter is of any string, no matter what string you're giving it. So I've changed the code slightly. Instead of saying word.char at 7, I've said word.char at word.length. And the length of cow is 3. So if we ran this program right now, it would still give us an error. And hopefully you can see why. Because the length is 3. And if we pass just the length by itself, it's always going to be one more than what the index is. So we're going to have to do something to the length in order to get our target index, which is 2 in this case. And so what we're going to do is we're simply going to subtract 1 from the length. When I run this now, instead of giving me an error, it's going to say the last letter is W. And this is going to be true for any word that I use inside of this program. And I'll show you, because if I revert back to the word barefoot, I'm still going to get the last letter is T. And I didn't have to change the code in any way. So this can be a useful tool for finding the end of a string. Next, what I want to show you is there are different ways to find the last letter using different methods. I've shown you using charat. You just say word.charat word.length minus one, and the output would be the last letter is T. But what if I wanted to use substring? I could do that, and I could say word.substring. The first parameter would be word.length minus 1, and the second parameter would be word.length, because word.length is always going to be one more than the index that we're looking for. 
And you have to remember the second parameter of substring is exclusive, so it wouldn't include this. It would again give us the last letter is T. And then one more example would be word.length minus one. Well, that's exactly the same as charat. Well, it happens to work in this case because the way the overloaded substring method works is if you put one parameter inside of there, it's going to start there and go to the end. Well, if we start at T and go to the end, it's going to give us T in barefoot. The length method simply finds the length of a string. It's important to know that length is always going to start counting at 1, whereas its index is always going to start at 0. What effect that's going to have is the last index is always going to be 1 less than the length. And as I showed you in the slides, the length method can be used to find the end of a string. So if you were trying to go through a string backwards as opposed to forwards, this would be a good way to do it. And it would also be a good way to find the last letter, regardless of what string you're trying to find the end of. And although length provides a simple tool, it is also a powerful tool inside of the string class if utilized correctly. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do like below. If you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.